Sergeant First Class John White, a good man on my Facebook site, good Christian man, he has challenged me to make both of our favorites, which is strawberry Pop-Tarts. And I'm going to not only make these strawberry Pop-Tarts, but I'm going to make them gluten-free. And that's going to be even harder to not have a gritty, gluten-free tasting Pop-Tart. Well, if I wanted a regular one, I could buy one, right? But for those of, of us who have celiac disease or are allergic to wheat, we can't do that. So today I'm going to be making gluten-free Pop-Tarts. This is going to be my first attempt. Let's see how I do. We've got three quarters of a cup of the pie crust mix here. Then I added another half or almost another quarter to a, a third of a cup of my um, light flour mix, my own little personal flour mix. And put in just an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of sugar. And that's optional, but I'm making a pop tart. I want a little sweetness. Only going to use two tablespoons of salted real butter. This is really, you know, I didn't level them off or anything, but two good sized uh, pieces of uh, butter flavored vegetable shortening. See, two tablespoons, two round tablespoons. Okay, that gives me a little over four tablespoons. And I did just one. And if you want, I've got one tablespoon of cold water here, okay? So let's get started and let's see what it takes to make this dough. Okay, I'm just going to start by dumping in my flour into the bowl. I'm going to whisk my two flours together just lightly here. Kind of sifts it when you do this as well. Now I'm going to add my little eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder. Mix that in. I'm going to add in my one tablespoon of sugar. That's right, we're going to whisk that in. We're going to drop these pieces of salted butter and we're going to break it up right in here like this. And we're going to do this for both pieces of butter. For the second piece of butter, second tablespoon of butter. You want this to be cold. You don't want this at room temperature. Try not to handle it too much. And we're going to do the same thing with our semi-rounded tablespoons of, because um, I didn't smooth these off. So they were kind of heaping, but kind of not. I'm just going to break that up in here like so, like that. The same thing for the other one. Okay, this looked a little dry. It wasn't looking the way I wanted it, so I added a little bit more of the butter flavored Crisco. A bit more of the butter flavored shortening to the pie crust. Knocking it back off. Cut this in really well. There you go. That's that right there is the consistency that I'm looking for. The coarse cornmeal. See that? That's perfect. That's going to make a nice crust for our pop tart. Now there's a way to tell if you're going to get good adhesion with this when you add your cold water. And that is to give it a squeeze. See already it's adhering without the water. Now it crumbles back apart because that's it's not stable yet with the water. There's no moisture. But that's going to make a really fine crust. Now, I'm just going to take and beat my egg for about 15 to 20 seconds. Okay, I added the egg back in, added another tablespoon of cold water, sprinkled a little bit more of the flour in, added a little bit more of the Crisco, until I got the texture that I wanted and it formed a nice, not a firm ball, but let's see if I can show this to you. See, it's like a thick cookie dough. This got rid of some of the saltiness as well. Okay, so I'm just going to let that rest so it's not great. I'm going to sprinkle this with just a little bit of my recipe. It's in my cookbook from my light flour mix. So, so take this and lay your dough out. 
don't want to get too much flour on here because then it won't spread out very good. Then kind of go like this again. And give it a flip. So, okay. I'll cover this with a piece of plastic wrap, and we're just going to roll this out to about an eighth of, or, yeah, about an eighth of an inch is what I'm going to go here. I'm going to hit every direction. Because it's the shape of a pop tart, I'm going to try to keep it as oblong as possible, or not oblong, I should say rectangular. Now we're just going to cut these, get rid of some of these edges, and we're going to cut these as if we have two pop tarts sitting side by side, because we're going to fold this over to make one pop tart. So I'd say one pop tart would be about this wide, so we'll go this wide right here right there and I'd say a pop tarts about oops pop tarts about this long what you say okay this will make two so I'll just use a little thing of water here now for a filling we gotta decide what we're gonna put in here it could be any type of preserves but John challenged me to make a strawberry pop tart so I'm going to make at least one strawberry Pop-Tart. It's called Strawberry Fruit Spread. It's thicker than the Welch's, and it tastes more like the inside of a um, Pop-Tart. So I'm going to go with this one. And I'm really going to mix it up a little bit because I'm also going to use the pumpkin butter that I used this year. And I'm going to make a pumpkin pie Pop-Tart. Now how's that sound, John White? A pumpkin pie Pop-Tart. Now who doesn't like pumpkin? If you do a little bit of the strawberry preserves. Now on this, remember to leave about a half inch here from the edges because we're going to rub this with water and we're going to fold this over and we're going to flute the edges and seal them. Okay, now we have our pumpkin butter and we have our strawberry preserves. And what we're going to do is we're just going to dip our finger. We're going to get the edge of this a little bit wet. Dip our finger in the water. We're just going to kind of make this kind of a pasty glue feeling. When it feels like it's kind of glueish, then you know you're going to have a good seal. It's a little harder to do sometimes with this. I probably should have rolled these a little bit thicker, but. this kind of into a glue. Okay, so all the way over where our crease is going to be. And I even like to seal it on the sides in case it breaks here where you bend it. Do that for both of them. Okay, so now we're ready to fold this over. Okay, when I fold the uh, gluten-free kind over, it kind of broke on the edge. So I took some of this extra dough and kind of kept it from leaking. Kind of patched up a little bit. This broke too, but I was able to fold the bottom flap over. Kind of keep it a nice even kilter. Now I'm going to take the tines of my fork and I'm just going to kind of press these together. Give it a nice pattern. It's where it doesn't pay to be left-handed. There you go, and we're going to do this all the way around our little Pop-Tart. Okay, this will help seal the edges. We're going to do it for the other one. There we go. And we'll kind of clean up this edge a little bit. Do that right there. Okay. Now we're going to put this on a, I'm not even going to cook these on cookie sheets. Um, I'm going to put a cookie sheet underneath of them on another rack, but I think I'm going to try to bake these on a baker's rack so they get cooked on both sides so I don't have to flip them. I think that will be the best since this is uh, already crumbly. To 340 degrees, 330 to 340 degrees, and then I'm going to spray really well. I'm going to spray that. I'm going to spray my rack. 
then I'm going to carefully lift these off. I probably should have put them on some plastic. Carefully lift these off the uh, pastry towel and we're going to sit them on our rack. Okay, I'm going to pierce these with this fork. But I'm not going to go through to the bottom. Same one over here. Oops, I think that went through. Didn't mean to. I'll do it right here where I had to fold over the, the extras. Okay. Looks good. Now I'm going to slip these in the 330 to 340 degree oven for between 10 to 15 minutes. We'll keep an eye on it and we'll see what happens. Okay, I turned the light on in the oven so that I could watch what they were doing because this is a big important part of discovering a new recipe. You really got to keep an eye on it so you can give people exact times and measurements. So you okay, in a ramkin here I just have about a quarter of a cup to a half a cup of powdered sugar. Just going to add, just, you can add a little bit of milk or a little bit of water. I'm going to add a little bit of water. And I'm going to make this a thin glaze. Glaze them when they come out of the oven while they're still warm. I mean, this is a Pop-Tart. You could sprinkle pop, um, colored sugar on these. Not bad at all. So while they're still warm, I'm going to go ahead and glaze them with this icing that we made, this glaze. Just like you would a Pop-Tart. the other one. There we go. Okay, we put on some blue sprinkles and some pink sprinkles. These are looking like Pop-Tarts. I don't know, John. I think I'm going to win the challenge. I'm going to do the right thing and I'm going to use a fork. Are you ready? Take a good look at this. This is my Pop-Tart kind of blend it together, but here we go. Mm. Ready? I have to tell you, that's one of the best things I've ever had. John, I would never eat a Pop-Tart after having this, and you could make this with regular flour. This is absolutely delicious. Okay, I just had to have another bite. This was so, this was so good. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my God. I'm sorry, that is delicious. This is better than a strawberry Pop-Tart. This is heaven. This tastes like a strawberry pie. It's one of the best things I've ever had. Mm -hmm.